Hello and welcome to the Metropolitan Opera for the network broadcast premiere of Franco Alfano's Cyrano de Bergerac, coming to you over the Toll Brothers Metropolitan Opera International Radio Network. I'm Margaret Juntwait. Today's opera is based on the play by the great French poet dramatist Edmond Rostand. It's inspired actors from Jose Ferrer and Gerard Depardieu to Christopher Plummer and Steve Martin. Marco Armiliato conducts this operatic treatment of the story, and it's performed by Sandra Radvanovsky, Raymond Vary, Anthony Michaels Moore, and Roberto De Candia. Placido Domingo, though, is indisposed, and the role of Cyrano will be sung by Antonio Barasorda. The 75th anniversary season of live Metropolitan Opera broadcasts is sponsored by Toll Brothers, America's luxury home builder, with generous long-term support from the Annenberg Foundation and the Vincent A. Stubbio Foundation. It's probably not surprising that a popular French romantic drama inspired today's opera, Franco Alfano's Cyrano de Bergerac. Alfano was born in Naples in 1875 to an Italian father and a French mother, and he spoke fluent French. He began studying piano and composition in Naples, but when he was 20, he moved to Leipzig to continue his studies. He wouldn't return to Italy to live for nearly 20 years. Like other Italian composers of his generation, Respighi, Busoni, Malipiero, to name a few, Alfano made a point of keeping up with modern trends in music, and he had ample opportunity. He gave piano recitals in Poland and Russia, and he lived in Paris for more than five years. By that time, he'd already written his first opera, and while there, he turned out two ballets for the Folie Berger, one he wrote in only 15 days, and it ran for 160 consecutive performances. But it was also in Paris that he turned his talents to something quite different from dance music for a Parisian music hall. Alfano encountered a dramatization of Tolstoy's novel, Resurrection. Over a period of five months, writing in Paris, Berlin, Moscow, and Naples, Alfano transformed it into his opera, Risurrezione. And while most opera-goers, especially outside of Italy, may know Alfano only as the man who completed Puccini's Turandot, it was Risurrezione that assured his place in Italian music. But now, thanks largely to Placido Domingo, who's championed the revival of interest in Cyrano, there's another Alfano work to consider. And as Peter G. Davis said in a recent Opera News article, today's audience now has the opportunity to enjoy Alfano's creative ingenuity, his honest theatrical response to a wonderful story, and his attractive score, brimming with its own special musical character. Act one of Cyrano de Bergerac opens in the theater of the Hôtel de Bourgogne. Dancers are performing on stage, but the young cadet, Christian, is scanning the tiers of box seats, hoping for a glimpse of Roxanne. He's in love with her, but he's so intimidated by the combination of her beauty and brains that he's too shy to approach her. The lead actor, Montfleury, has barely appeared on stage when the performance is interrupted by the guardsman Cyrano de Bergerac, the pride of the regiment. Cyrano is a poet, a wit, and peerless swordsman, and detests Montfleury, and drives him off the stage. The Vicomte de Valvert, who's courting Roxanne, challenges Cyrano by citing the one great unmentionable of Cyrano's life, the size of his nose. Cyrano engages him in a sword fight, brilliantly improvising a ballad as he thrusts and parries. With the last line of the ballad, Cyrano defeats the Vicomte, much to the delight of the cheering audience. Cyrano may have won that battle, but he admits to his friend Le Bray that he's hopelessly in love with Roxanne. He believes he can never win any woman because of his unsightly nose. A nose so large, he says, that it precedes me by 15 minutes. Roxanne's governess brings Cyrano, who's also Roxanne's cousin, a message from her asking for a private meeting. Cyrano is overjoyed, promises to keep the rendezvous, and happily sets off to participate in another duel, this time against a hundred of de Guiche's men, who are planning to ambush Cyrano's friend Liniere. In order of vocal appearance, Le Bray is Julian Robbins and Ragano Roberto de Candia. Christian is Raymond Vary, Liniere Andrew Gangestad, and Montfleury Bernard Fitch. Cyrano de Bergerac is Antonio Barasorda, 
The Vicomte de Valver is Brian Davis and Roxanne's governess, Sheila Nadler. Roxanne, who appears in this act but does not sing, is Sandra Radvanovsky. The concertmaster this afternoon is Nick Ennett, and the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra and Chorus are conducted by Marco Armiliato. When the curtain goes up, the Hôtel de Bourgogne is realistically depicted in cross-section as the curtain rises, revealing a small stage at the left and three tiers of boxes in the center, and even chandeliers that rise to the ceiling just as they do here at the Met. Francesca Zambello, who created this production, designed this as a tip of the cap to this opera house, and both sets of chandeliers rise simultaneously today. Normally, the, Mets, the Met lights would be risen to the ceiling even before the conductor entered the pit, which he has now. Marco Ermiliato shaking hands with Nick Ennett, our concertmaster, and it's time for Act One of Cirno de Bergerac, live from the Met. <laughs> 